Welcome. To another. Welcome. To Welcome. Another. To another. To another. <laughs> <laughs> episode of driving to the res the yeah drive to the res the whole way to the res yes it's your favorite hosts larry Inelia and, and larry Inelia. that's our all-time best yes Oops. we've been working on the song too huh how did that get moved um like that Okay. Feel good? Yeah. I think so. It was a bit foggy this morning, wasn't it? <clears throat> was it? A little foggy, a little cold, a little drizzly. Yes. It made me think of, uh, hmm, warm and sunny would be nice. <laughs> really? Yeah. You didn't like foggy? Foggy, cold, and drizzly isn't my favorite, mm -hmm. which is funny. Why? Because uh, we were walking down the marina one day. I remember when we first uh, got together. Yes. And it was cold, yes. foggy, drizzly. It actually was raining like <laughs> so hard. It hurt your skin when the rain hit it because it was so rainy. Yeah. And, and it was coming towards us, icy rain, and it hurt your skin when it hit your skin. Yeah, it was wild. It was wild. But I remember you'd just, you'd just been living in Sacramento for 10 years. And yes. I kind of thought you liked hot and dry. I mean, so hot that... You never asked fried. me, yeah. You go outside and you go like sizzle. I mean, I like sun, but that that area it gets a sizzle. It, it sizzle. Yeah. You do get a sizzle yeah. going. It's like wow, sorry, honey. It's so you know nautical. <laughs> Walking <laughs> to our boat. <laughs> it's a half a mile walk to the door. Yes. Right, yeah, yeah. and you're you you shocked me. What did I say? You said what? This is my favorite weather. I love this. Yeah. This is how I like it. Yeah. It's like, oh, I took a great big weight off my shoulders. And I'm like, <laughs> gosh, how are a uh, guy and I going to get this place to be hot and sunny and dry? It's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Anyway. Anyways. That was a little... Uh, when I see, anecdote. yeah, when I see fog, I, I often, I always remember or feel like magical energy. Mm, yeah. Like it really <clears throat> translates into something like the mists. Uh, yeah, mist of Avalon, like? Yeah, like, like the book. The, yeah, like the book, the mists of Avalon. Yeah. Something magical is happening when that mist comes in and your world becomes magical and all possibilities open up. You know, I agree. That's the funny thing about it, isn't it? What? Because honestly, I like it when it's windy and stormy and rainy and blowing, and <laughs> yes. and I also like it when it's sunny and warm. Yeah. But the tendency is for us to like the one that we don't have, right? No, not really. Not you. I'm talking about me. Oh, okay. You like the one we have. Yes. Unless the one we have is the one you don't like. Right. I like multiple ones of them. And like variety, we, maybe? Yeah, whichever one we have. <coughs> you don't if like we it. have it for too long, I want the other one. <laughs> I think one of my favorites, well, I have a lot of favorites, but one of them is when it's sunny, yeah. bright, and yeah. cold, like cool. Ugh. I love that one because I don't get overheated and I can go outside. And I love to see the, the light rays coming in through the forest canopy. Mm -hmm. and all the beautiful shades and sparkles that it creates in the the droplets on the leaves, on the grass, on the moss. I think that's wonderful. <laughs> well, I think I might have to take it to Alaska, honey, because I remember so many days the sun would be out, it'd be clear, and we're thinking, oh, it's going to be nice to go outside. It's burr. Burr. <laughs> What's going on? Well, here's like that too. Is it? Not yeah. like there, I guess. It's a little bit. I don't like extreme. it like freezing cold. Yeah. I don't like extreme temperatures. No. But for me, cold is more livable because with cold, you can put more clothes on and proper clothes and you're okay. You're okay. Even with rain, you can put rain gear on and you're okay. But with the heat, it doesn't matter. You can take all of your clothes off. <laughs> you're still too hot. And you're still too hot and burning. <laughs> and now you're point. burning and sunburned. <laughs> That's right? a good point. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. 
Let's uh, talk about what we came to talk about. Yes. And it's not the weather. No. But it does. Not, not the weather. It does have something to do with the weather. In the, in the way that we can talk about the weather when other conversations are not working for us with people. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the weather is always a good go-to. Yes, yes. So today we want to be talking about being kind, loving, and having strong boundaries. Kind, loving, and having strong boundaries boundaries yeah. and yeah because one of the things that i noticed and i've been asked since we released the questionnaire to see if people were yeah the questions games. one to nine yeah. or no it was one to thir- 12 or 13 something like that there was 12 or 13 questions. there was a lot of questions yes. and i i i had five i think yeah five that i wasn't quite uh, up to snuff on <laughs> so a lot of people wanted to explore the first one when it says do you still look do you stay loyal, still loyal uh, to a person who hurts you and others, you know? Yeah. And that we talked about and people discussed, you know, well, how do you set boundaries around that, you know? So yeah, but... I thought we would talk about that today. You know, what does it mean and why is it important, you know? Right. Because right. there is a little bit of Marty sometime, martyrdom carried by people when... They think, well, it's okay, it's only me, they're hurting, it's fine, I can take it, you know? Also, yeah, I was like, I've got thick skin. I mean, yeah. all this training and processing and everything else, it's, I'm not, they're not hurting me. Yeah, yeah, that's the type of energy that people might come and All with. that work has to be good for something, right? <laughs> Just, anyway. Okay, let's have a read, shall we read a little bit of it? Yeah, because okay. clearly I need work on this. I think so. Clearly. Getting all fidgety, fidgety and, fidgety. and like boundaries and yeah, all this. Are like, oh, come oh, on, no, please Can we just not, not talk about this. No, we, It'd be better listen. if we if we just skipped to number we don't two. Need to. We don't need boundaries. We don't just need boundaries. Just be nice to yeah, people. Be nice. Just okay. be nice. Okay. Let's face it. We're like workers, and we do not like hurting people's feelings. Right. Uh, yes. Right. Matter of fact, it's very startling when yes. that kind of thing happens. It's like almost the worst day of your life. When you hurt somebody's, when you hurt somebody's feelings. feelings yeah. Yeah. But did you know that this has been used to lower ours and our planet's frequency for thousands of years? No, I did not know that. Yeah. That's a pretty big statement, so let's unpack it a little bit. Okay. But before we do that, know that this article is about abuse that is not deeply damaging at a physical or phys- psychological level. We're talking about conversations, actions and reactions that are not putting you or others in danger. If you or others are in serious danger, call the police. Seek help. Okay. Talk louder, honey. Oh, no. Did you hear that? Why is my voice not coming through properly? It's coming through, but you're talking quiet. I'm talking quiet. You've set your boundaries to be um, small. Let me move the table. It's not the table. Look, I'm yellow. Are you yellow? Yeah. You just have to up your amplitude, lady. Okay. That's better. Now you're in the red. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Can never be right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Having healthy boundaries with people who repeatedly invite you to low frequency engagements is directly connected with our expansion of awareness and the raising of the frequency of what we know of as Earth. So we said that, but I think that the one and the other are a bit. Not quite. Not quite connected in our heads. So could you go say that one again? Sure. Okay. Having healthy boundaries with people who repeatedly invite you to low-frequency engagements is directly connected to our expansion of awareness and the raising of the frequency of what we know of as Earth. By putting up with the negative action of others, giving them excuses, we're being complicit in the progressive hammering of negativity into our lives and into the lives of people on our planet. In other words, we're encouraging it to keep going. Yes, basically, yeah. yeah. By not wanting to hurt their feelings mm-hmm. or other things. Yeah. And you know, a little comment here. Often when I have placed a strong boundary on somebody, they immediately attack. And I know that that was the right action. When they attack me, like call me, you know, say that I have lack of compassion, that I have a heart of ice and a um, hurtful and nasty person, yeah. When they're going to attack, I know that I was right to put up that boundary. 
because then they're attacking in the way that all light workers feel offended with something that I've been accused of something they haven't done and being accused of being hurtful and not compassionate, not compassionate and things yeah. like that yeah. yeah those are the like the open doors yeah then you know you're dealing with something else because you, well the, the reason that works is because you know you are mm -hmm. so you feel you got to prove it yeah exactly so and you, you got to prove it in the way that they, they can will, see it yeah so you put up with it right? i see yeah. yeah good trick yeah yeah there are various reasons light workers are taught to allow this negativity to expand and also create it and feed it. And these teachings catch because light beings inherently know that suffering and the hurting of others is unnatural and wrong. Therefore, whomever is doing it must have a good reason for it. And a few of these reasons are, and I have a few reasons here. Yeah, they have a few of those reasons. I was just thinking too, on that other paragraph, you know, one of the clues that you have is when you jump to the need to defense. When you yes. try to defend your action. But then you're screwed. Right? You, you, know, you fell for it, basically. You fell for it, basically. Yeah. yeah. Defending it in a way of, I'm not that, and this and this and the other, or doing what the person is asking you to do, right? Right. Uh, so that that you, you can, can prove. prove them wrong. Yes. See, I am compassionate. Yeah. I will give you a hundred dollars for buying a pair of shoes for your next interview, my darling <laughs> addicted son. And then what happened to your shoes? They were stolen. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. You're falling for it, is what you're saying? Well, I didn't fall for that one, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um here are some of the Oh yeah, the, the, some reasons of the or examples mm -hmm. that people would uh um, suffer or hurt each other. Yeah. And so, they think that are good reasons. Right. So these are the things that the reasons we're taught about why is it acceptable or allowable or encourageable to do these things, negative and hurting others, okay? Okay. One of them is that human nature is to hurt others and or themselves. Kind of like anarchy, if the anarchy was allowed and everybody were around shooting each other. Yeah, yeah. Or that whenever there's a crisis of yeah. the weather or political crisis, people go and looting, looting and, and destroying and burning cars and hurting each other. It's like the show your true colors is yeah. bad. Bad, yeah. But it isn't. It isn't, no. That's okay. all staged. Another one is the person suffered so much as a child that they repeat the same bad patterns. They can't help themselves, you know? Well, they're victims here. They're victims of their parents. They're yeah. victims of their mom. It's mom's fault. Mom's fault. Either the man did, mom did the abusing or they didn't protect the child. Either way. Either it's way, it's your fault. fault. Yeah. 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 Okay. Another one is addicts are sick and cannot help themselves. This is their ill, you know. This is a sickness. If you had cancer, you wouldn't castigate the person for having cancer. So the addiction is in sickness. Therefore, you can't castigate a person for being sick. Castigate mean not putting up with their negative stuff and, you know. Allowing them to abuse you or others. Yeah, well, they probably certainly are happy to be seen that way because they can blame it on not them. Yes. I know I felt like, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, it's not my fault. Yeah. I'm a victim here. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Just have to give me some patience. Give me some time. Let me go through this process where, yes. you know, I'm going to fail a lot of times. So. Just get used to that. Get used to that, you know. That's, and if you that's love me, me enough, getting better. And, yeah, if you love me enough and put up with me. At least I tried. You tr yeah, you tried. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And love cures everything. The more we love the abuser, the faster they will stop hurting others. All they need is love, man. But that is kind of true, but love with boundaries. <laughs> yes. And the interpretation of what love means, right? Isn't meaning love being walked all over. Exactly. That's yeah. why the critical yeah. key component is that love with the boundary, the proper boundary that is true love. It is true love. True love is a boundary. Yeah. Another one is it's better to put up with the abuse than to never see the loved one again. At least this way, the light worker can keep an eye on the person and yeah. if they get into real trouble, they're there to help. True, very true. I remember that one that one attached to a book I read. Yeah. There was a guy and his son who was a I guess a methamphetamine, heroin mm -hmm. type addict. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, it was his experience of his son's addiction. Addiction, mm -hmm. and his son wrote another book, and mm -hmm. it was his as the son's experience of his addiction and his relationship with his dad. Mm -hmm. There were two books parallel the same experience. Oh wow, that must have been really interesting. Uh, those are very interesting books to get to see it from both sides. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'll see if I can find the, the names that we can share it in the in the notes. Okay. So can you give us like a summary of the, the difference or something like that of the books? Well, the dad was uh, all of the uh, these. Mm -hmm. And he was and impatient forever. And mm -hmm. he gave him a million, million, million chances. He went through the parse process of trying to learn how to set a healthy boundary. Mm -hmm. And at one point in there, he did. And all of the things happened. He got attacked and called them compassionate, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In my recollection, um, he moved to a space where, space where he loved him, but mm -hmm. he didn't enable him anymore. Mm -hmm. But he still loved him, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the sons was like, you know, he had fall for every trick, every time. He always <laughs> fell for it. Then he turned to a real asshole, and he wouldn't fall for it anymore. <laughs> He's the worst guy ever. But it turned out that worked. <laughs> Something like that, anyway. Yeah. That's my memory. I might not remember it exactly right. Okay. But that's how I remember it. Yeah, yeah. At yeah. some point, his healthy, a healthy form of loving his son in whatever state he was in and releasing him to have his life, you know, mm -hmm. and stop becoming, stop being entwined and prolonging this process. Mm -hmm. At some point, it came to there. Anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, connected to that is the thought that when you love someone, you have to like them and everything they do, which is not true. You can love someone and dislike them deeply and dislike all of their actions. And it's, it, that's a part of it that is like so hard to understand for a light being. They think that because they're not coming from a dimension or a reality where people behave or act in very negative ways. So for them, love is intense and unconditional and everything, right? You can and are able to accept everything in that dimension. But in this one, when people have uh, can play like dark games, a lot of their actions are not acceptable or that you are, like when you see those actions or the thing, the way that person's behaving, you can deeply dislike it. And that's actually a healthy response. You can love someone and you can dislike some of the things that they do. Yeah. Right. Yep. But most people think that's not like part of the equation, that you love someone, you have to love them as they are, like you have to love all of them, including the negative parts, and that's the a little trick as that's well. The part that may, that the part, that's the part that gets tricky because, it is. I mean, we don't know what to do. Right. We're like, can't, move forward, can't move back, can't move sideways, can't even mm -hmm. act. Every act feels like the opposite of a helpful act. Yes. <laughs> we get in our jam, get in a real in a jam. jam. Yeah. Okay, the next one is the light worker does not want to be perceived as a cruel person who doesn't understand or lacks compassion. So, yeah, we talked about that already, right? Yeah, we don't, yeah because compassion, I mean... Most light workers will grab a spider and take it outside, you know, instead of squashing it. Yes. Although some of them, you know, I'm not saying don't squish no spiders. I mean, but I, I don't usually squish a spider. Yeah. And, you know, if there's a bug or if there's a thing or if there's something I can do mm -hmm. that helps instead of destroys, I go for the helps instead of the destroys, just yeah. like most light workers would, right? Yeah. But, and, but yeah, so the person who's being abusive or even society will tell you if you put like a strong boundary on someone, it means you're being cruel, right? And you lack compassion. That's what they'll accuse you of. And that's the opposite of who and what you are. So often that will be enough to allow the continuation of dark paradigm interactions with that person. Yeah, I, I want to, you know, I don't think that actually is what we're being taught. I don't think people are taught that so much as there's um, there is in addiction educations and things like that. They do teach healthy boundaries. They do teach about codependencies. They do teach about all of these things. It's mm -hmm. the addicted person and the person themselves 
who aren't educated, right? They're the, they aren't educated, and that's mm -hmm. basically the problem. They're going on, like, the feeling that picking up the spider and taking it out is equivalent to giving the drug addict some money for shoes. Mm -hmm. That That's compassionate, but that's, mis that's a misunderstanding of compassion. It's looking at it too narrow. It's the, uh, it's the narrowed awareness, right? Their awareness mm -hmm. is so narrow they can't see what a compassionate act is. Right. It's like taking the spider out and giving it to the chickens. <laughs> right? Yes. Which or, I do occasionally. Or the spider was a black widow and you <laughs> yeah. put it outside and your toddler steps on it. Yeah, yeah it's a misguided, yeah. misguided compassion. Yes, yeah. compassion, but not at an expanded level. Right. I think that's where we're at, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next one is forgive them for they know not what they do. Okay, well, that one might be how people are taught. Yes. That's a religion one, right? Yeah. 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 And that is true. But what does forgive them mean? Mm -hmm. Does it mean go be a doormat? For most people, yes. That's exactly but that's how they it interpret means. it. Yes. For most people, to forgive somebody or what their actions or their actions is to be a doormat and allow it to happen over and over again. Right. Because they can't help it. They don't know what they're doing, you know. But that's true. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> well, some of them do. <laughs> Read that book. Yes. <laughs> Read the books I was they telling you about. Know. They definitely knew what they were doing. Yeah. And you know what? If you allow yourself to be a doormat, you don't you you kind of trap them in a pattern of behavior they can't get out of. Well, don't want to get out of. They don't it's want like, to get out of, right. yeah. But also you're feeding it. By exactly. allowing that to happen. You're feeding it for sure, right? Mm -hmm. There's really literally no action, almost no action with them you can do that they don't interpret as feeding it somehow. Exactly, yeah. If you help yeah. them, you fed it. If you don't help them, you fed it. Yeah, yeah. There has, that's where it gets to be yeah. tough. Yeah. 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 yeah, because I remember with my own addicted son, um, I was helping him in any and every way that I could. He's my son. Of course, I went, I'm going to do that. And then I realized, I became street smart, and I realized that my help was actually enabling his addiction. So I stopped. And he turned around and said, you have to help me because you are, you hurt me. That's, and I was like, what, what are you talking about? I says, yeah, the, all these years you've been helping me because of guilt. You're feeling guilty that you hurt me so you're making up for it and that's why you've been helping me because you feel guilty i was like what what i don't get it <laughs> right because from their perspective the low frequency individual's perspective nobody does anything unless it's from out of a, compassion right <laughs> uh, unless it's something negative there's a negative reason for anything and everything that a person does Ah, right. that's true too. I have noticed that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a total disconnect in realities. Yeah, total disconnect. Total disconnect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Another one is they're teaching me lessons I need to learn. Yeah, I'm getting <laughs> a master's degree in, uh, I guess, shadow work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. I think it'd be best probably go hang out with the most of that you can and. Be emotionally connected to being abused by all of them. You know, get the most growth. <laughs> the most growth, yeah. yeah. I mean, we've spoken about this so many times. Anything, pain, suffering, negative traumas that you have suffered is there to disable you, to make you less, to make you shine less in the world. And you come in like a baby in the woods, right? But now become aware of it. And release those traumas, release that pain, release all that. Because now, by doing that, you can start shining really good. Nobody's teaching you how to be compassionate or loving or anything. That's not something you need to learn. You came in that way. That's the way you started. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. And it's connected to the next one. The most growth comes from shadow work. Right? Or integration of your shadow. Bringing your shadow, shadow and being a part of you. Mm. I mean, there... There, it's again, it's one of those things that in some ways, yeah, in most ways, no, right? In what do you some mean? ways, acknowledging and understanding that this shadow stuff was there to disempower you. Yes. That is a form of shadow work, understanding that, right? The shadows okay. 
are there to disempower you. Okay. So how do you release those shadows grab onto you? Processing right. your fears, processing your stresses, having a healthy mechanism for responding to these invitations, right? Mm -hmm. So in a sense, if you define shadow work like that, then yeah, that's but good. That's not but that's not usually what, what they're doing. They're trying say... to go sit in it and call it and accept it and make it, make it them or something. Or be integrated. Welcome it. Well, we do integrate process it. energy, negative energies by welcoming them yep. and letting them grow, yep. right? But that's not the same as yeah, identifying with that negative energy, thinking it's part of you. And help that's, and, and helping it put it leaving it inside and allowing it to stay there because it's part of you. That's very, very different. It's right. actually the opposite. The opposite. It, it, yeah, in a sense, it allows that kind of thing to multiply because it is welcomed as an integral part of the person, your person, right? Yeah. So you'll find yourself more and more and more yeah. shadows. That's why my work, I don't call it shadow work. And people might mistake it as shadow work because you go like, fear, you're welcome here, you're allowed to express and grow. But you're allowing it as... Like you're looking at it, you're allowing it to exist and express, not making it part of you or identifying it or as making part it of you, a good part of you, or, or make thinking a it critical had part any, of you, an exactly. important part of you, yeah. that kind of a thing. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's why if you do look at the fear processing exercise, you or do the stress release exercise. all of it, not the first. Yes. Part of it, or have it done to you, yes. and things like that. You have Do to all go through, of it, the yeah, entire process. Yeah. You have to finish the process. Not it's just not that it. long. No. It honestly isn't that long. It can be five minutes, even a minute, or even a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Once you've got it, refresh yourself to make sure you still have it. But you should be able to incorporate it as the way that your body reacts to mm -hmm. these uh, invitations instead of. The ones that were programmed in the past. And it just becomes an integral part of your normal daily experience. Yeah. 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 But like most things, you know, our memories can be a little fuzzy and our remembering of how to do it can get a little bit sidetracked. And we can get, uh, we can get, I think, it's not so much, it's almost a little bit like hijacked mm -hmm. where... We think we're doing it right, but we've got it completely wrong. <laughs> yes. So just follow the instructions. Follow the instructions and, and refresh yourself. It's not complicated. Yeah, it's not terribly complicated. Not complicated at all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I remember a friend who came up to me and said some horrible, horrible things to me and accused me of all sorts of nasty stuff. And I was like, whoa, what's going on? Well, I'm allowing my anger to express. <laughs> it's like, that's not the exercise. Not, that's not the fear processing exercise used for anger. That's not it at all. Like, that's the opposite. That's the opposite. That's feeding it and vomiting it on another person, contaminating them with it. That's not it at all. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you can't unsay those things either. No, you can't. <laughs> they stay there, right? Yeah. Anyway. Okay, if you read the above and know that all of these reasons to put up with someone abusing you or others are low-frequency programs that need to be released, then well done! You are 100% correct. Mm -hmm. <sighs> if you, like the majority of light workers on Earth, came in from a light-only existence, it is very likely that you carry one or more of these programs with you, believing they were high-frequency and compassionate programs. Yes, that would be me for a lot of them. <laughs> yes. But here's the thing. If you let another person hurt you or others by giving them excuses, justifying why they did it, and believing them when they promise they won't do it again for the tenth time, we're being complicit in multiplying their own pain. Many abusers, because they're light beings, although not working for the light, incur a huge debt of pain, guilt, and shame when they hurt another person. Eventually, they will orchestrate a suitable punishment for themselves for the pain they gave you or others. In other words, the more you let another person's abuse, abuse slide, the higher the payment will be. Also, if you refer back to the possessions and how to protect yourself class, you will also know that often all these negative invitations 
and not from their light being themselves, but from a malicious writer who they consciously or subconsciously let in. You're doing us or them, you're not, sorry, you're not doing us or them any favors by feeding those malicious writers. Yeah, feeding those malicious writers doesn't help. No. I mean, I can look, I have like a hundred examples. If I look out the window, I go, you know, we drive into the res. That's the name of the podcast. Yeah. All of the fishermen that I know, you know, the vast majority of them have addictions, either self or with crew, mm -hmm. right? And it's like some form of self propagating expansion of make it worse <laughs> yes. you know it's like how do we stop that how do we get out of that cycle the only thing i could do the only thing that worked so far for me was i stopped fishing mm. i haven't figured out a good way forward yet you know because i i did put the invitation out right yes, okay high did. frequency screw show up yeah and then we can go mm. and i haven't haven't been able to you know make that happen right or bring right. that hasn't orchestrated hasn't right. happened no it's still a thing it's in process mm -hmm. and obviously a large part of why is me yes. the programs that i carry of course yeah so we'll keep looking at these together okay. and i'm glad that you wrote this article thank you honey yeah you're welcome okay the best and most compassionate thing you can do for that person and the planet is to stop allowing the hurt and abuse to happen you can do this by in a loving and compassionate way but you have to be strict and not let anything slide Often when we do this, the person is able to learn new patterns of behavior in their interactions with you. Oftentimes they take their abuse elsewhere. As it turns out, you're not worth sticking around with if you don't play and add to their low frequency games of victim aggressor. But what about you? It does hurt to create a healthy boundary sometimes. We love these people and want them around us. But we need to look at this from the perspective of an eternal divine being. All right, because yeah, I have direct experience with this, doing that. Just means, guess what? They never talk to you. Never again. talk to you, never see you. Don't even know who, what, where. Yeah, yeah. A healthy boundary does not always mean that you cannot have a loving relationship with the abuser. It means that you do not respond in kind or in any way they want to manipulate you to act. Learn mm. to respond and interact from your level of frequency instead, not theirs. And if they become more abusive when you do not comply or give them excuses for their low frequency actions, Continue putting those healthy boundaries in place and act from your personal frequency. Sometimes the abuser decides to stop contacting you or having anything to do with you when the boundaries go up. But more often than not, they do turn their interaction around and learn that they have a place where they can have a natural high frequency experience. Sometimes it is the first time they can explore their true frequency. Let's stick to our frequency. Give, let, this gives permission for others to join us there. Imagine a world where everyone we interact with knows this and agrees with it. Yep, that's the new paradigm, which is what we came here to embody and create. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. All right, well, we'll go into this much more, I think, in the second, second hour, hour because there is a lot of things to dig in there. Yes, yes. Yeah, observations, yeah. experiences with it. And I think the last part, you know, stick to our frequency and giving them permission and having interaction with them, it's like, on the one hand, you want interaction with them. On the other hand, you're like, thank God I don't have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. You know, often when we continue the cycle of abuse is through fear. Whenever we take a fear-based decision, you can guarantee it's not going to have a high-frequency result, right? It's not a loving decision so often let's say we'll put up with somebody because we are afraid that they're not going to talk to us again and we'll never see them again if we don't put up with it so um i have an example of my addicted son who wrote me a very very abusive email extremely abusive email and when i read it, of course you know my emotional body was hurt and everything but I closed my eyes and I thought, what would I have liked to have received from my son? And I imagined this beautiful email telling me about his progression in life, his work, his kids and his life and what he's doing, right? I imagined it. And then I answered the email as though I had received that 
email from him. Not the abusive one. I answered it like, like just pretend. I just pretend, play pretend. And I answered it like he had sent me the most beautiful email. And it was, had no expectations. I didn't have any type of thought that anything would come of it at all. And a week or two later, I received the email that I had imagined he had sent me. A really beautiful, high-frequency update of himself, his children, you know, and his life and projects and dreams. It was amazing. I was shocked, actually, because I never knew that was even a possibility. But that's what we're talking about here. This is what we're talking about. And when we were talking about the weather earlier, you know, it's like in England, it's one of the cultural things that if one of the safe <laughs> topics that you can turn to when you're interacting with somebody that you don't feel comfortable with is the weather. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the British talk about the weather a lot <laughs> because they don't feel very comfortable interacting with other people. So they talk about the weather a lot. <laughs> and there's always that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah. Um, I've been in situations like in a family gathering where a person would come in with full-on negative interaction, not necessarily about me or to me, but let's say, you know, negative and destructive gossip, full-on. And then... I would just talk about something completely different, like I'd never heard what they said, right? And if they turn around and said, did you not hear what I just said, right? I said, yeah, 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 hold on, but let's, you know, I just wanted, to, you know, whatever, you know, like, yeah. I said, yeah, 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 in a minute, in a minute. But first, let's talk about this, because blah, blah, blah. And often it never goes back to that other thing. Right, never goes back. And we touched a little bit on the Nick malicious writer. Also, um, we talked about it. I know between ourselves, we talked about it's like the dark writer. Dark writers, yeah. yeah. And this possessions class, if you haven't taken it, I think you should, because it helps you with the boundaries and it helps you with knowing and understanding what's, what's going on. Going on. Yeah. So when when you're a light worker in your mind, a light being in your mind, mm -hmm. and you're trying to be compassionate and help and you see the person that you know is a light being and you're trying to be compassionate with them mm -hmm. knowing you know they're forgive them for they know what not what that kind of stuff you know yeah, yeah. in many cases you're not dealing with them right you're right. dealing with that dark rider yeah. and that dark rider engages you with <laughs> like oh sweet I got me a light being. I got yes. me a light worker. They'll yes. do this and they'll do this. And because, they can feed oh, me a they lot. They can feed me a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, be wise to the ways of the dark rider. Yes, yes. Compassion yeah. is not what a dark rider, uh, well. They will write it. Well, yeah. um, a low frequency compassion. I don't even know what word you would say. How do you use what, well, is, what word would you describe compassion enough, as being taken advantage of? Funnily enough, the word compassion is misused because compassion means to feel with the other person what the other person is feeling. Oh, That's what it actually so means. Empathy? Empathy would be better, right? Empathic. Right. And, you know, it's like um, when one might say, you know, it's like, why, why, is, why is this dark writer or malicious writer pushing for low frequency engagements is because every time the light being that they're writing creates a negative action, their pain increases and that's what they're feeding on. Exactly. They're not feeding on your pain, right? Other exactly. big things that might be feeding on your pain, but they're actually feeding on the pain that you created by putting up with the pain that the other person is inflicting. Yes, that's a very important part. Yeah. I know it's all the way at the very end. <laughs> Maybe... Maybe we can start our second hour with it. Yeah, that'd be and good. And start there, make that a little bit, I mean, obvious. And blink, 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 yeah. blink, blink. That, yeah. that's, that's a subtle change in what you look at and understand the comp how it functions, how, yeah. how it works. Yeah. Because, yeah, I always thought it was me feeling mm -hmm. pain that they were feeding on. But it has nothing to do with me. No, no. 
I'm just a helpful orchestrator. Yes. Or I'm a not a helpful orchestrator. And if I'm not a helpful, helpful orchestrator, then, hey, that's better. Stop orchestrating. <laughs> so try to not be such a helpful orchestrator. <laughs> right? Negative feelings. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And if, you, if you want to hear more of this and you aren't already subscribed, go to Subscribe Star. Yes. Right? And yeah. you get the second hour right with there. Ilya and Adelina with us. Yes. We'll ask a bunch of questions. We'll go way, way more into depth. Yeah. And, uh, can you do discussion? Or, yeah. Yeah. I think you can go to Rockfin. Yes, Rockfin has the second hour too. That's on Rockfin as well. Yeah. So either one. Mm -hmm. And uh, join and subscribe. So we have a new person there. Yes. Right? Yes. Are you ready to introduce her or not? Yes. Oh. Okay. You will be seeing a lot of Ashley in Subscribe Star. Yay! Yay! I'm going to gonna... call her a Tribe Star. Stripe Star again. I'm going to call her a Tribe Star. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Or what Star her tribe? Official tribe. Her official title is going to be. What about? Be, I'm going to call Star her a tribe, tribe star. What about Star Tribe? Uh, or. Okay. No, but Tribe Star sounds pretty cool. Okay. It rolls off your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be the star of the tribe. Okay, Star Tribe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's super exciting because she's yeah. going to be organizing. Um, uh, after parties for all the and for the classes, for example, but also um, study groups and discussion groups uh, calls during the week for our homework and our second hour. Yep, yep. And all of these things, very exciting, very exciting. Yeah. Yay! I'm excited. Yay. Me too. All right. Well, if you aren't subscribed, we'll see you next week. And if you yes. are, we'll see you in now. Snap. <laughs> Now. <laughs> now. Love you, darling. Love you. Wow. An excellent episode and very useful. As light workers, it is so easy to fall for all these traps and manipulations and just assume that everyone around us has just good intentions. Join us for part two where we dive deeper into some of the examples and further clarify what it means to set strong boundaries in a kind and loving way. Even when we talk about our children and it is so hard. See you there. See you there. <laughs>